Okay. <coughs> Any questions? Start. No questions? Anything. Questions on anything. Then we can go to chapter five. So the question on these, um, you, what are these? What are they called? New mention projections. Um, it when you're doing the front carbon, does it matter what so like you know you're talking about one going into the plane of the page and one going out of the plane of the page. Does it matter the way you orient those three in the front? No. In a Newman projection, no. Because what they're doing is they're actually pointing towards you. So it, when you draw all the Newman projections, you're going to get all three structures. You just keep have to keep one constant. Okay. So th while the back carbon's changing, that's changing the conformation. But if you try and... If you try and change both, you may just be rotating the molecule and not making a new conformation. That's why you got to hold one constant and rotate the other one. So the one that's held constant, you can put those three in any order that you want? Yeah, you can put them in any order you want. Now, for this homework assignment, there was actually two answer key. There's two, two answer sets, depending on how you oriented them. But that doesn't happen very often. So there'll actually be two answer keys for the for the problems I gave you for today. So if you were looking at them and had a completely different set than another person, that's actually okay. And we'll get to that next week because the, this, that molecule had what are called chiral centers. And so where there were different ways of drawing it. Cyclohexanes. So the issue with cyclohexanes is that a cyclohexane, in terms of its structure, it should be one of the least stable cyclic alkanes because what it has going for it is that you have a 120 degree bond angle if it was flat and carbon a tetrahedral carbon an sp3 hybridized carbon needs to have a 109.5 degree angle and so the 120 degrees doesn't match up with the 109 and a half so what would happen is you would see the orbitals kind of not perfectly aligning head to head, they would be a little bit skewed. And so that would not form very strong bonds. But um, in this case, the cyclohexane is not flat. Instead, it, in its most stable form, or its most stable conformation, forms what's called the chair conformation okay so this is that's not planar that's not stable and so the chair is the most stable conformation of the cyclohexane now you may have seen cyclohexanes or six membered rings drawn like this in the past Right? You see that in biology all the time. And that's not what the ring looks like. And if you were to modify it and say, oh, well, now let's put in our let's pin on in our tetrahedral bonds like this. The problem here is now all of the hydrogens would be eclipsing each other which would not make it very stable. So the idea that cyclohexane is planar 
is not the most stable conformation for two reasons. The first is because the bond angle is too big, and the second is because all the groups would eclipse each other. So the ring basically puckers. I have to say that very carefully. We have a puckered ring. And what that means is that now the, all the angles relax to 109 and a half, and all of the hydrogens are no longer eclipsing. They're all actually gauche. It's a staggered conformation. And you'll see that in the PowerPoint um, that I had in the that I have in today's Canvas, and I could show you on the on the uh, iPad as well. So we have this we have this cyclohexane um, ring in the chair, and there's a half twist and a quarter twist and a twist and a half. There's all these little other conformations, but really there's only two that are important. The chair, and if I raise one of the carbons up, I have the boat, or what should probably be it, the canoe conformation. And this is very unstable because now um, there's some groups here that are really close together, and all of the groups down here on those carbons are going to be eclipsing each other. So this is a high energy conformation, and I'm not really going to worry about it that much. The one that I'm most interested in looking at is the chair. Now the boat we'll talk about in a moment or two because that's going to be what we would call a, a sort of an intermediate when we do what's called a ring flip. Okay. All right. So what we need to know about the chair is we need to know how to deal with it. So how are we going to deal with this chair? Well, I'm going to draw a big chair. And here's what I know about all these positions. There are two sets of positions on a chair, axial and equatorial. The axial positions are basically perpendicular to the ring. And so there's three positions up and then three positions down. So I'm going to actually call those A for axial. And so there are three up, three straight up, three straight down. And those people usually can identify pretty easily. Like if I said this group, this axial group right here, is that above or below the plane of the ring? Above. So the other thing we have to keep into account, we have to keep track of is that in a cyclohexane ring, each carbon has a group above the ring, above the plane of the ring, and one below the plane of the ring. So that if I was up here looking down on the ring, I would see groups that are above the plane of the ring using a bold wedge and below the plane of the ring using the dashed wedge. So let's identify the ones above the plane of the ring with a square and the ones below the plane of the ring will put a circle around. So that way we don't necessarily have to color code everything. I mean, I could color code it, but unless you have like one of those pens that clicks into four different colors, and then the whole lecture period is just about clicking those pens or clicking the erasers that have the clicking thing too, then this will be a colorless way of coding this. Right. So axials most people can handle relatively easily. It's the equatorial ones that's going to take some practice. 
So equatorial bonds then are roughly in the plane of the in the plane. So here's my first equatorial. And you may say, well, how do you know to draw it that way? Well, you're going to have to practice drawing these positions in the way I'm going to draw them. But if you also look at the carbon, the carbon looks like it's tetrahedral, which it has to be because it is. So if you draw a if you draw some positions and there's like a huge gap, it's probably not drawn right. There's got to be a tetrahedral. It has to look tetrahedral. All right. So now we'll put in the six equatorials. So my question to you is, for this equatorial position, is it above or below the plane of the ring? Below. below? Why? Because, the, because this position is axial up, and every carbon has to have one above and one below. So my suggestion is that as we're going through this, um, that if you're confused about whether the equatorial positions are above or below, look at the other position attached to that carbon. Because it's an axial position, and it usually is pretty easy to tell, is it above, above or below, and that'll give you the opposite. So this one's below. Then this one over here is above. And then this one is below. This one is That one's below. And finally, this one over here is above. So they do alternate as you go around the ring. So this would be a completely labeled cyclohexane in terms of equatorial positions as well as positions above and below the plane of the ring. And so that's one of the things that we have to first identify is where is that where is that substituent at? Because cyclohexane has all hydrogens, that's boring. I want to start replacing the hydrogens with different alkyl groups. And so I'm going to need to know is that alkyl group above or below the plane? Is it in an ax axial or equatorial position? And notice that not all of the axial positions are above, not all the equatorial positions are above. So you really have to take a, a good look at it. Okay. All right, so now let's make life a little bit more complicated by saying. I want to draw confirmations for methyl cyclohexane. Now, if I started with this methyl cyclohexane, putting the methyl group into the axial position, I can do what's called a ring flip and make the methyl group go into an equatorial position. So in doing a ring flip, what we do is we bring this carbon, this end of the carbon up so that we form our boat confirmation and then I bring this carbon down to form what I call the left-handed boat 
only because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you could call it the right-handed voter. <clears throat> Whatever you, there's sort of a left and a right-handed versions of these. And then what would happen is there would be my two positions to put the methyl group on. <coughs> the methyl group was above the plane of the ring over here. It should still stay above the plane of the ring after we do a ring flip because a ring flip isn't isn't really a flip. It's that motion of bringing, forming the boat and then moving the other group down to put it in the opposite chair. Confirmation. So notice that the methyl group went from axial to equatorial, but it always stayed above the ring. It is always in a position above, above the plane of the ring. Does that make sense to everybody? So what I'm gonna, when I'm going to do what's called conformational analysis, when I'm going to write different conformations of these cyclohexanes and rank their energy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's put a methyl group here, and then let's put the methyl group in the, in the equatorial position. So it's usually easier for me to use, use only one form of the chair, and then just simply switch the position. So what I'm showing is the result of a ring flip without having to write the left-handed version of <coughs> the ring. Okay. So these basically are also, these are interchanged by our ring flip. Are you okay? So you do the ring flip and then physically flip the entire cyclohexane upside down. And that's how you get the, the equatorial version of the method. Not no, I'm not I'm not twist I'm not twisting this ring at all. Instead what I'm doing is I'm just kind of showing you how we could, you know, picture a ring flip, but not have to write this that type of rate. Because usually my experience is you have enough troubles trying to get one form of the ring than trying to have left or right. You can see how much better mine looks here versus over here. So when we're going to do conformational analysis, when we say, okay, which of these two conformations is the more stable, in writing the two conformations, I'm just going to interchange the position realize that was part of a ring flip. Okay. So then my next question is of these two these two structures which one is the most stable? Do we want to vote? Let's vote. So in order for us to vote, let me pull up my iPad presentation tool. <coughs> Make sure I'm in the right class. Number two, section two. Okay, so let me. So we've got A and B, and we'll make C the same energy. 
So your choice is which one of these two conformations is the more stable, A or B, or if you think they have the same energy, <coughs> use C. If you don't know, guess. We have a tie, a virtual tie, between A and B. So you know what that means? That means I can find my egg timer, then I say, discuss for a minute, we'll revote, and then, so you've got 11 A's and 13 B's, All right? So then we'll revote. So discuss for a minute what answer you put down, why you put it down. Can I do what? A is axial, E is equatorial. Axial is perpendicular to the ring. Equatorial is like in a plane of the ring. Right, roughly in the plane. So these are axial and this is equatorial. And then squares above the plane of the ring and circles are below. Okay, are we ready to revote? Revote. A, B, or C. I didn't stop the question, so as you're revoting, or if you decided to change your answer, it's changing, but we won't let everybody see how it's changing until everybody's answered. All right, has everybody made any changes they wish to change based on their discussion? All right, let's see what we've got. So we move towards B. Okay. Why do we move towards B? Um, because during B, it would have a hydrogen that's equatorial, hydrogen that's axial, instead of two hydrogens by each other that are equatorial. Like, because the carbon below the methyl group has hydrogens on it. Okay, like this, and like this. Yeah, and so B, the two hydrogens aren't both uh, equatorial. Okay. Josh? Uh, for, for B, if we really, I'm going to talk about A instead. 
For A, there's gout propellant. We're looking at the one to two carbon bond from the metal side. There's going to be gout propellant of essentially an ethyl group on the other side. Um, what, whoa, 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 whoa. Of an ethyl group? It's not really an ethyl group, but I'm just calling it that because there's two carbons. Okay. Anybody else? David? So, so equatorial is always more stable because. Okay, the axial com between the axial components. Did that come from the book? Or my lecture. It's true. The group is going to go equatorial, but why? So what we have to what we have to remember is that there are other hydrogens in here. And to be honest with you, the hydrogens that are on the carbons next to it, like this hydrogen and this one, aren't going to play much of a role. We'll come back to that and, and take a look at that, but really they're all these are all staggered. So they're not going to play that much of a role. Now what does play a role is the hydrogens and the groups that are axial because there's limited space in that area. So when we put an when we put an alkyl group or a non-hydrogen group into the axial position it's going to have a steric interaction with the two hydrogens that are basically in what we would call one, two, three. Those are called one, three diaxial interactions. So relative numbering wise, groups that are one, three, and they're both axial are going to have some steric interaction. And I can show you that with a cyclohexane. So we'll do, let's see, we'll just do that one. So here's the chair. And this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and that hydrogen, those three, these three hydrogens that are above the plane here, here and here are competing for space. Um, you can kind of see them a little bit better here, 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 and here. So if we put a methyl group there, there's two places to put the methyl group, but I'm going to go to cylinders here. So we can put the methyl group equatorial and if we do that then there's really not a whole lot it's interacting with like so but if I put that methyl group into its axial position what's happening is this is interacting with these two hydrogens. And so they're competing for space, and so that actually that methyl group will push those two hydrogens farther away. If you want, here's, here's the real live version. So you, this methyl group and these two hydrogens, you can see in the space filling model how close they are. They're like right on top of each other. So 
the best place, the most stable place for any non-hydrogen group is equatorial. When you go into an axial position, you're going to have those groups sterically hindering each other. And you're going to have these diaxial interactions. How would happen if you two non-hydrogen groups on the same carbon? That's e oh, on the same carbon? Yeah, so like if there was a dimethyl and they were both kept to the same carbon. You, you'd have no choice. One would have to be axial and one would have to be equatorial. So what I'm talking about is when you have a when you have a choice, so that the ax so that the methyl group can either be axial or it can be equatorial through the ring flip, what's going to be a more stable conformation? If there's two alkyl groups, then ring flipping isn't going to change anything. Now, if one of those groups is bigger than the other, we want the big group equatorial, because the bigger group I make axial the more unstable the molecule is going to be. So it's kind of like what we did with Newman projections on Wednesday. right? The bigger the group, the more steric interactions, the more unstable. So this is all based on size. And that's why we want to make sure we put the right, we put the groups in so we have a, some, some idea of what the size is. Okay, so does that kind of help in terms of that's what the that's what the that's the reasoning behind the rule. I mean the rule is yes. Groups have to be equatorial to be most stable, but why? Because they're under they're gonna undergo these diaxial interactions. And sometimes they're unavoidable. Okay. Does that make sense? So wherever possible, put the group, the non-hydrogen group, equatorial. And that'll be the most stable conformation. So let's make it a little more complicated then. How about we write the conformations for 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. So that means on carbon 1 and carbon 2, I'm going to put a methyl group each. Now there's four ways to do this. There's four permutations of this. I could put the methyl group axial, and I'm going to do that for the first two. On the upper carbon, I'm going to put both methyl groups in the axial position. And then on the bottom two, I'm going to put the methyl group equatorial. So this is like this is the equivalent of me putting the front carbon, all three groups on the front carbon exactly the same. We put in two conformations, we put the group axial. And in the other two conformations, we put them equatorial. Now, we have a choice for the second methyl group. How about I put it axial and then equatorial? So for the first one, I'm going to put it axial. For the second one, I'm going to put it equatorial. So that now for the top two structures, I've got the methyl groups, one axial, one equatorial, and both, equi and both axial. For the bottom one, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's put the methyl group equatorial, and now let's put the other group axial. So now I have all four combinations of axial and equatorial for the two groups. So, question. Question number one. Remember what cis and trans means. 
or do we know what cis and trans means for cycloalkanes? Cis means that both groups are above or below. So in other words, they are on the same side of the ring. And trans means that the groups are on opposite sides of the ring. So it's like cis and trans with double bonds, only now I'm applying cis or trans to alkenes, cycloalkenes, or cycloalkanes. Right. So my question is, which of these structures, and there'll be more than one, are cis? Now, let me see. In order for you to answer that, oh, stop. In order for me to let you answer that, we're going to, I'm going to have to give you a word answer. And so type in any of the letters in alphabetical order, please of which of those structures is cis. So if it's just A, you can type A. If it's just B, type B. If it's A and B, type AB. And it's covering up the methyl group in the upper right hand corner. So which one or ones are cis? Okay, let's see what we've got. Let's see, we've got five ADs, seven ADs, two ANDs. So I would say that's the most popular answer is A and D are cis. Okay. Is that correct? Let me ask a question. That methyl group that I just circled above or below the plane of the ring? This one? Uh oh. What? Eclipsed is a different is going to be a different thing. We'll get to that. So is everybody okay that's above? So those are both above, which makes that one this. Uh, this one. This one. That makes this one trans. This one. Okay, on three, a blow. <laughs> How many people say above? How many people say above, below? 
it's below. How do you know that? Look at that hydrogen. That hydrogen's definitely above. So that one's below. How about this one? How many people say above? Below. Okay. Again, if you're confused, look at the axial position. I'm asking that, look, I've been doing this a long time. Every day it just gets longer and longer. But we start with this problem because this is the one where you've got to go to the basics. You have to look at this and say, okay, this one is, let's see, this below, that's, this one's above, this one's above, this one's below. Because when you first look at this, it doesn't quite look perfect like one's above and one's below. So one is above, one's below, that makes this one trans. So C is trans, and then D is what? Cis because they're both below. Okay. So C causes us some initial problems, and hopefully we can work through that. Okay, so now, oh, I actually have enough time to do this. So now my question is, once we, because when I give you a problem, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, I want you to write the four confirmations for a structure. In this case, 1,1-dimethylcyclohexane. Then I'm going to ask you, identify the cis and the trans. And then I'm going to, I, then I'm going to ask you, okay, let's rank these in energy from number one to number four. Okay. And we have our rule, right, in terms of ranking in energy. So my, question, my first question would be, do any of these structures have the same energy? Do any of them have the same energy? Yes? I see some yeses, some nodding heads. Yes? Then you know what my next question is. Which ones? What do we think? A and D. A and D? A and D. Do we agree it's A and D? Do we want any other, we want to throw out any other two, two letters? So why is it A and D? Um, because both had one of the methyl groups in the toriol uh, position and one in the exo position, uh, and they're both cis. Which well, stop. Erase the cis part. They both have one axial, one equatorial. If I moved the group over and made it 1, 3, I could still have one where one's axial and one's equatorial, and it would they still have the same energy. So the fact that it's cis has nothing to do with that. They have the same energy because one's, one group, methyl group is axial, one group is equatorial, one methyl group is equatorial in both structures, so they have the same energy. So that means... A and D have the same energy. Okay? So, can we rank these according to energy? Like, which one of these, and now A and D are the same, so which of these is the most stable? Hold on. What I'm gonna, what I want is I want an electronic vote on that. No, because they have one methyl group axial and one methyl group equatorial, okay. and the cis has nothing to do with it. 
They both have one axial, one equatorial. So what I would like is which one of those, and your choices now are, you can use A, A, B, or C, and if you use A, then it's A and D. But of A, B, and C, which one is the most stable of A, B, and C? Which one is the most stable? No, no, no. Which one's the most stable? Remember, stable is less energy. So which one's the most stable? All right, let's see what we've got. 23 C's. All right. Why? Okay. Did anybody say B? Did you say B? Why? I know what you're saying, but which interaction is going to cancel out with which? There was another person that said that said C, right? Was it you? Oh, B. Why'd you say B? No, that's not helpful. <laughs> I'll tell you why I would have chosen B. Because when I see these two methyl groups right here, what are they? Now, thinking back to Wednesday, not eclipsing, they're gauche. These two methyl groups are gauche. What are these two methyl groups? They're anti. So if I would have been tempted to choose C, I would have chosen C because having the two methyl groups gauche is not as stable as having them anti. Does everybody see my logic? Except why is it wrong? No, it's wrong. Because that's only for the Newman projections of acyclic systems is gauche less stable than anti. I've got a cyclohexane ring now, and I've got different rules. So avoiding that gauche interaction puts these two methyl groups axial and lets them both engage in 1,3 diaxial interactions. And so B is the least stable of the structures. And C is the most stable. So I'm not trying to confuse you with this, although I think I have. The idea here is that when you, when you have the cyclohexanes, you have a different set of rules than you had for Newman projections. 
So usually when I do this, if I do it the right way, I can usually get you to split 50-50 on C and B. Because 50% of the people will be looking at it from what we talked about with Newman projections, and then 50% will be, well, the rule is they have to be at the FB equatorial, which is still the rule. So we have to be careful in terms of keeping the rules straight with the molecules that we're using. Okay. All right. So I will take your homework problems. Somebody this morning found my extra problems on Newman projections somewhere in a folder that I apparently didn't look carefully. So I will move those into Wednesday's folder. And I do have some problems for this that I'll move into the Friday folder. Um, some written out ones uh, to help you in addition to what's in the book. So I'm going to hold off on assigning a, another take-home quiz on this stuff until Monday. But on Monday I'll give you one of these to do. If you didn't get your exams, come up and you can get it from me. Otherwise.